Welcome to the Management Advantage. This week, we're coming to you from East Central Mississippi, and we're gonna be talking with Lee Woodall, who is a manager of Prairie Wildlife. And we're gonna take a look at the management practices he is using, converting pasture land and crop land into viable wildlife habitat. This is a pretty unique place. They offer preserved quail hunts, wild quail hunts, rabbit hunts, and deer hunts. Before we leave this week, I'm planning on sampling a little of it all, so y'all stay tuned, we'll be right back. We've got about 6,000 acres here. Uh, it's in a family-owned farm. It's owned by Mr. Jimmy Bryan. Uh, traditionally, it was a cattle, full-scale cattle operation, and he's kind of diversified into row crops and now into, uh, into wildlife uh, conservation. And, uh, and basically, about 10 years ago, uh, Mr. Jimmy decided that he really wanted to enhance the wildlife habitat on his property. He wanted to try to uh, bring back northern Bob White on his farm. And we're trying to implement uh, conservation practices on this land to bring back northern Bob White, essentially. And we've gone from three or four coveys on this whole farm to this last fall, we located 62 different coveys on the farm. So, it's, and that's over the course of 10 years. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a long process, but we're making, we're making headway in the, Basically, the residual birds that were here are responding to the management that we're doing. Right. Um, well, what I want everybody to take away from this show today is, yeah, we're going to focus on the management practices that you're doing out here. But y'all are taking advantage of government call share programs to do a lot of this work, and it's not something that just y'all are, are privileged to. This is something that anybody can go to their NRCS office, ASCS office, whatever you want to call it talk to the representatives there and find out what programs are offered and they can take advantage of that government cost share money to help them do the wildlife improvements. Absolutely. Uh, some of the different programs that we're involved in, uh, we're involved in uh, CP22, which is a riparian buffer, basically uh, along creeks and streams on your property. Uh, you can get cost share to go in, uh, fence that off, keep cattle off of mm -hmm. it, and don't put it in row crops. And basically, you can get call share for the establishment, and then you can get uh, call share on the rental rate in, in the future for keeping it out of production. Um, also, we have a, a program called CP33, which is field borders around row crop fields. We put a 120 foot uh, buffer strip around all of our row crop fields and plant it in native warm season grass, and then and we get an annual rental payment to offset the cost of taking that out of production. Right. So, and that's really improved our uh, nesting, brood rear and habitat for uh, northern Bob White, uh, just bed and cover for whitetails. Oh yeah. Uh, Breaking up these big, huge ag fields or this pasture land that y'all are converting with those strips down through there, it gives them a place to get from point A to point B where they're not exposing themselves and you're creating a ton of habitat just on those field edges. Right, we've gone from basically a barbed wire fence running down the middle of yep. a huge fescue field to a uh, wildlife habitat corridor for, for, uh, for wildlife to move along. I mean, our, our rabbit population has just absolutely exploded. Now just in this area that we can see right here off of this hillside and down through that bottom, you took advantage of three different cost share programs on this. You used whip money to convert this from pasture land to good habitat. You've got your riparian buffer down there where the cedar trees are, and you can see the barbed wire fence, and then you've got your, your field edge right through the middle. I mean, look at the wildlife habitat that you have provided. You've got areas for the deer and stuff to work that creek, come up that strip, cross over. I mean, it, it's perfect. If you could imagine this hill, just solid fescue with cattle on it, uh, and the row crops down there, those fields going all the way to the ditch with nothing but about a 10 or 12 foot wide ditch uh, with fescue in it. I mean, that's the way this place mm -hmm. used to look. And we eradicated the fescue, and we came in and we planted native warm season grasses, and I mean, it provides great uh, nesting habitat for quail, bed cover for deer, and uh, cover for rabbits.
coming, Chuck, right there. Yep, the hillbilly. Most people across the road. We're gonna get some more out of this. I ain't believing there ain't no rabbit in here. Get out of here. I've seen them stay in there longer than you would think, you know. There he goes, there he goes. Ha, <laughs> ha. He cartwheeled that one. Ooh, that ought to have been a good one. Yeah. Good boy. Right, good boy. Get him, boy. Get him, boy. <laughs> Get him. Get that rabbit. Get that rabbit. He got him. Good boy. Good job. Oh, got them bunnies going. Yeah, he was hit. Lee made a heck of a shot on him with that old double barrel. And I just put him out of his misery. Get up out of here, ready. There he goes, right there. You there goes another one, right there, right there, right there. Right one there. went that way? Yeah, one, one went, went that this way. way. <laughs> I thought you was looking at the rabbit I was looking at. No, with. I jumped one up. <laughs> it's nice when you think you know what's going on. There ought to be one there, and it wasn't one, it was two. Man, this is perfect. Perfect deer country, too. Yeah. Man, this is just right. There he is, there he is, coming out, coming out, coming out. Shot under that rabbit every <laughs> shot. Going back, Lee. Ah! Whoop. Nah, I just shot into where I thought he would be. I doubt I hit him. Yeah, he went straight across. Man, I hit him! <laughs> that was luck. I mean, I, I didn't even see him when he shot. You're welcome. I just... I followed him and I couldn't see him anymore, but I just shot into the grass and went. So in other words, you shot without clearly identifying your target. Uh, I identified him, I just couldn't see him anymore when I shot. <laughs> there you go. There he goes, there he goes, there he goes. Well, y'all know, typically it's Casey and I that go on these hunting trips. Well, y'all noticed the second cameraman. When we got there, Lee's brother-in-law, Jesse, said he would like to try to run the camera. So after we had given him sort of a crash course in how to run the camera, he took it a little too seriously and he actually crashed his truck on the way in. He didn't let Total in the truck stop him, no. He made it to the hunt, got some excellent footage, so Jesse, we appreciate it. This is a little bit different habitat type. We were looking at the field the ag fields and now this is pasture land that y'all just fenced off some strips and left the habitat around connecting. What specific program did y'all use to do this? We used whip money uh, to, to pay for the establishment of this. We don't get any rental rates on this, right. but we just got paid for to establish it. And this was just solid fescue across here uh, in pasture and what we did was we just fenced it out, sprayed the fescue out, we planted chickasaw plum, sawtooth oak and uh, some native grass and I go in there and put annual food plots every year, Milo for uh, quail. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've we found a, a wild covey of birds uh, three or four times in this corridor oh, yeah. this year. So uh, the, the birds are absolutely using it. And what we were doing was connecting the, 
the habitat we have on this side sure. and the habitat on the other side, we wanted the corridor so the birds can move back and forth and put deer around. No, I'm whatever. sure the deer lay up in those plum patches out in the middle of nowhere. You wouldn't think one's going to be there, and that's where one of your biggest deer is allowed well, to be laying is when one of these little thickets on the side of a pasture. The big bucks, they like to use these areas like this, but they can get in there and, and nobody will mess with them. The weather's horrible. It's full moon. They've got plenty of deer out here, but they just aren't moving. So what we're going to do now is just try to do some little two-man drives. Lee's going to walk through a couple of these little old draws and some of this warm season grass and see if he can't push a deer by us. We had three does come out and I couldn't get a shot at them. He needs some doe shot. We were just going to shoot a doe. And I looked up and all I can see is horns coming up through there. He was probably a 22 inch wide eight point. I don't know how I missed him, but Casey said I did. There comes Lee up the hill now. They hold up in these little old grass strips on the edge of these pastures. Golly, what a big deer. Why couldn't I do that on that buck? <laughs> and and y'all don't get bogged down on the CP10, CP33 and all that. Just go to your local extension agent, NRCS office, and tell them, I mean, you, you went in, you're trying to improve wildlife habitat. You go in and sit down with them, say, I've got X number of acres, here's where it is, here's what I'm wanting to do. And they can help you along the way picking what programs because there's Equip programs and equip programs and different CRP plantings that, that can work. These are just the ones that you're taking advantage of. That's right. There's a lot more than what we're doing. Um, and you have to be eligible, and there's depending on what you're doing on your property. Basically, if you've got cattle or row crops on your property and you're interested in managing for wildlife habitat, uh, just go to your local USDA office or NRCS and, and talk to your representative there. Just tell them what your management objectives are and what you're doing right now on your property and they can tell you what you're eligible for and they'll help you along the way. Y'all, the habitat that's being provided by taking advantage of these government cost share programs, of course, is helping the quail, which is the main goal. But the rabbit population is flourishing and the deer are utilizing all these areas. So at the end of the show, we're gonna run all of these information here at Prairie Wildlife. They have preserved quail hunts, wild bird hunts, great rabbit hunting, and they are going to produce some tremendous deer over the next few years. Showing you how to utilize government cost share programs to reclaim old pasture land and ag land and turn it into productive wildlife habitat is just one more way that we're helping you gain the advantage through proper management.